Very interested to know your impressions of uh, the last two GP2 tests, and particularly working with the new Pirelli um, system you now have for 2012 with two compounds, etc. So over to you, in your words, how's it going so far? Well, first of all, I can't really get into details because it obviously would give off quite a few secrets of the team. Um, but basically, uh, we've noticed that the, the two types of compounds overlap. So it makes it actually tricky because you could use one compound or another depending on the situation, which just makes it all the the more difficult. Uh, instead of being two clear types of compounds, you know, like a qualifying type tire and then a normal tire, um, since they overlap, we can actually, depending on the situation, the track, uh, temperature, and, and you know, generally uh, the aggressiveness of the tire wear, we could use one or the other. So right now we're actually working very hard on that because that could actually be where uh, it might catch some teams out and as you know, at the beginning of last year, we got caught out. So we're going to, you know, we're going to learn from that. Yeah, I can understand the complication. I mean, from Pirelli's point of view, it's um, it's a difficult one. Uh, and they're saying that the hard compound, I think you're going taking the hard and the medium to Malaysia, the first round of your series, um, has about four or five laps more in terms of its life. But as you point out, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a clear-cut choice because of the performance issue. Uh, and they are pretty closely matched. So tell us how, I know you don't want to give, it too away, give away too many secrets, but tell us how you approach those two tests then in terms of getting that data and what sort of spec you're running the cars in. Well, first of all, unlike the winter tests that we do before Christmas when we're choosing drivers, we really put them flat out, so we really go for times there. Here, times are absolutely of no importance. What we're trying to do is, is do what are called long runs, to see how the tires uh, hold up, and especially try to do back-to-back -back runs with one tire and then the other, is similar conditions as possible, so we've got enough data to be able to see which of the tires is best for each specific situation. Again, I won't tell you much more than that, <laughs> but um, that is the first work. And then once we've got some data and have a general idea, then we start working on, on the dampers and then finally the aero to be able to go with what we've seen in regards to those tires. So basically the tires it basically pulls everything else behind it. Mm. Uh, and so you've got to do all the work in regards to the data if you go tires. If you don't have the data of the tires, I think some people might end up getting a little bit lost at the beginning of the season, like we did last year. And, and so therefore, at the moment, lap times that we've seen in the two tests uh, don't mean that much, I guess, because some teams are out there doing the homework, as you've just described. Some teams maybe are going for uh, quicker lap times and just trying to give their drivers mileage, perhaps. Um, so your take on lap time so far and where you're at relative to your nearest opposition? We're definitely um, up there, uh, possibly among the best in regards to race uh, times. Uh, with, you know, full fuel load and all that. That's why we just couldn't do good times if someone's going out, you know, with 10 liters of gasoline and, you know, qualifying tires type of thing. Um, so we're not going to compete and don't even care about competing with them. You know, um, we always have a saying that the world champion of free practice is not exactly world champion. Um, but then again said, uh, some teams, if they felt probably quite comfortable already with their setups and harass, in regards to long runs, maybe they were just trying to do setups for qualifying. So, you know, it's a bit difficult to see where everyone stands a little bit. This year's a little bit like F1. And by throwing this option tire in there, it just makes it all the more interesting. So, where is everyone? Mm, don't know. But then again, you know, the good teams are always there. You know, you've got people like iSport or ART and to some extent also bands who are there and they're doing a pretty decent job. So, I guess we'll probably be good in Malaysia. But then again, like I said, I don't know where everyone stands. Alfonso, obviously you did Abu Dhabi last year, but this race in Malaysia is, is a little bit of a first in the sense that when you've been overseas before, it's been the GP2 Asia Series. And, and now here you are preparing for the European Series, well, the International Series, uh, with a race in Malaysia. Tell us about the logistics involved in that. It's a nightmare. As a matter of fact, that's what we're doing at this uh, very moment. I mean, we're uh, since yesterday doing all the the proper work on the cars to get them ready uh, until about tomorrow morning. They might pull off and all that nighter. And then it's going to be packing everything into these special cases that are ultra light. So as, because we're only allowed 5.5 
uh, tons per team, um, including the cars. So we better kind of really watch our weight and let left them teams, which they've got quite a bit more. So our first priority is what do we really need to take along? What is really useful for bringing along? What do we need for spares that might come up? Obviously, teams lend each other parts, you know, so some teams might uh, say, okay, I'll bring more wishbones, you bring more disc brakes, and if it's necessary, we'll interchange. There's some deals going on between teams in that respect. Uh, like, uh, usually one or two teams bring compressors, and then they share between four or five teams. That way, you save just the 20 kilos of a compressor. Um, so, you know, there's a bit of bartering, shall we say, going on <laughs> there in that respect. But then all the rest is just being able to put it into the proper cases because if not only do we have a weight issue, but we also have a size issue. So the cases are what they are. So what does this mean into them stays here? So, yeah, it's a bit of a headache. But then again, you know, we've done, you know, we did Abu Dhabi last year and then the previous year's uh, Bahrain. So we're starting to get a good deal on, on how to do it. Uh, and I'm assuming that it's an FOM freight uh, system that you're using. What, what airport are your, uh, are your cars and freight flying from? Actually, it's interesting. We're working directly through DHL. Uh, why it's like that, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's an FOM DHL deal, uh, how that works. So basically, the DHL truck will show up at a certain time at, on Monday at our uh, at our workshop, and then it'll go on to probably ADAX, and then it'll go on to uh, some teams in France, etc., until it reads the plane that it has to put everything on to. Uh, going there. Uh, on the way back, it's going by ship, actually, uh, because the, the time frame between uh, Malaysia and the Bahrain Grand Prix is enough to send it by ship. So I guess we save some costs in regards to that. Oh, wow. Well, let's hope the surf isn't up in the... Uh South China Sea as the ship's coming back. Um, <laughs> Let's hope the Iranians are not up to anything. Well, yeah, right. that too. Uh, finally, Alfonso, um, Australian Grand Prix next weekend. Your picks for podium there, how it's going to pan out? Always Vettel. I mean, he's always been my favorite driver. Um, I think Ferrari will have a bit of a hard one. Button, button. He's looking good. McLaren are always good at hiding their game, but I think they've got a pretty decent car. And then, though, I'm sure, you know, uh, Kimi and and, uh, and Grosjean, that's going to be an interesting one. It's a bit of a question mark because I don't know really how good the car is. I'm not saying the drivers aren't, but I, I, will it stay together? Uh, so I'd say Red Bull with Vettel, Button with McLaren, and, hey, maybe throw Toro Rosso in there some, you know. Wow. Let's upset it a bit. Yeah, well, if Daniel Ricciardo is on the podium for his home Grand Prix, that'll be quite something. Alfonso, as ever, great to talk to you. Thanks for spending the time. Have a lovely weekend and very best of luck the upcoming test and, of course, for that uh, first round in Malaysia. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you.